Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for uh, thanks for joining us today. Um, Today's session is uh, really a uh, follow-up to the conversation that we've had during the security show in Edmonton uh, back a few weeks ago. Um, and today's really uh, what it's going to be is a much deeper understanding and look into the Verda technology, um, a technology that we're very proud of and it's a technology that is a, has been awarded um, at ISV West a couple years in a row. Um, so definitely something that brings a lot of value to the surveillance industry. Um, if you don't mind, just flip the, uh, to the next uh, slide. This is uh, just a quick view, uh, real quick, on uh, the, uh, one of the buildings, one of the uh, uh, buildings that we have in Boulder, Colorado, where uh, the headquarters for Spectrologic is. Next, um, next slide, please. Perfect, thank you. So uh, before we dive into uh, who we are uh, and all that, I think that um, uh, what I would like to um, briefly do is just introduce the players for the today's call. Uh, my name is Sandra Dragici. I'm the account executive uh, from a Spectra perspective covering uh, Ontario and everything west of Ontario. Um, you probably remember me from the, uh, um, from the conversations we've had at the um, at the security show, I also have with me uh, Ryan Moriarty, who is the uh, uh, security or surveillance, video surveillance specialist um, covering uh, Canada, as well as uh, Ryan Shapiro. I just thought we'd make this easy and we pick uh, both guys with the name of Ryan, I guess, for everyone. Uh, but yeah, Ryan Shapiro is also present. He's the um, uh, solution architect uh, for, uh, for uh, basically the same territory as me, so Ontario and everything west of Ontario. Um, so Ryan is uh, Ryan Moriarty is going to uh, do most of the presentation and then uh, Ryan Shapiro is going to introduce you to the actual um, UI and show you how to, um, how, how give you a, basically a feel on how the, how simple it is to um, to work with the Verda box. Um, as far as the company itself, we've been we've been in the market uh, for a very long time. So it's been uh, uh, three decades basically that we've been in, in the market. Uh, this is not a company that uh, is new. Uh, we have a very long-standing tradition in the market. Very good, solid products uh, throughout all these years, which is obviously the reason why we're still uh, very strong in business after all this time. Uh, we continue to be privately held, which um, I personally like a lot because um, really what it brings to the table is it puts the customer and the relationship with the customer um, in the center of everything that we do um, versus the interest of, um, of shareholders, I would say. Um, it is 100% employee owned, so everyone here is motivated to help to keep our customers happy because, hey, if the customers are happy, our business grows. Um, and overall, we're about 550 people uh, through, um, um, in a very nice spread through about uh, 11 countries worldwide, so very good presence worldwide. Uh, we've been in Canada from, um, I would say, from the pretty much very beginning. I am actually based in Canada, um, so we have a local presence with a lot of local customers in Canada. Um, uh, as I said, uh, the uh, uh, the HQ is in Boulder, Colorado. That's where you would also get all your support. That's where all the engineering is as well. And I think that's important because a lot of times what happens with the, uh, the, the, the bigger corporations, I guess, uh, whenever you have a support ticket, you're being bounced back between different continents, time zones having to explain to a lot of other people a lot of people, uh, what the situation is in order to get some, some help. No, in, in our case, it's 24-7 based in Boulder. <clears throat> For those of you that are in Alberta, it's basically the same time zone, um, and um, it, it's, uh, it makes it very, very convenient. Um, and as I said, we do have presence globally um, with about uh, 20,000 uh, uh, installs in uh, in, in about 50 countries. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, we, we thought we'd give you um, a, a quick uh, quick look at 
sample of our customers, uh, obviously these names are, are big names. I'm pretty sure that everyone recognizes most, most of these names. Those are the customers that currently um, and have, have for many years trusted Spectra with their business. So, um, you know, uh, NASA, um, it's, it's obviously a, a huge one. Discovery, it, it's one of my favorites. So basically, if you guys ever watch Discovery, everything that you watch on HD, uh, comes from Spectra Technologies, so really, really, um, really active there. And um, um, it, it is about 60% of our business uh, revolves around um, media content, so video content, managing video content, which obviously the surveillance would be the case. That being said, I would like to uh, hand it over to uh, uh, Ryan Moriarty for the rest of it. And, um, um, after that, Ryan Shapiro will, will uh, give us a look at the very best. Ryan? Perfect. Thanks, Sandrin. Uh, appreciate the time, and thanks, everybody, for joining. And as Sandrin mentioned on, on the front end of the, uh, the WebEx here, I am the um, vertical market manager for the security, physical security and surveillance market for Spectrologic. So I'm tasked with um, growing this market and, and introducing Spectra as uh, a player in in the video archive or video storage space within within this market. So we've been um, we've been in the market for a, a little bit uh, now, probably about four years. So we're we're still feeling it out and, and getting our getting our toes wet in certain areas, and then having having great success in certain areas. So like like Sandra mentioned on on this this slide here. Um, we have a lot of users in, in, in different vertical markets that, that we play in, whether it be general IT, uh, media and entertainment, or broadcast space, or, or the video space here. Um, we have a lot of customers that, that trust us with archiving and, and storing, whether it be their video content in broadcast, video content in physical security, or their backup content in, in general IT. So I'm going to go over a little bit about kind of what we're seeing in the market in terms of storage solutions um, and then uh, see how that compares to what we're doing at Spectra um, with, with our solutions as well and then uh, talk about uh, our, our Verde solution, um, our video archive solutions in a little bit more detail. Um, so starting off, um, why why did we enter the market? What what do we seen in the market that that led us to entering this market? And whenever we jump into a new market, it's it, we see a reason for it, obviously, and, and we just saw the tremendous growth in in this market, whether it be. Uh, customers switching from analog to digital content, uh, IP cameras exploding, and then wanting to take advantage of that, uh, that high def video, whether it be 1080p, 5 megapixel cameras, 30 megapixel cameras we're seeing in some uh, federal government entities. Um, there, end users are just wanting to secure their environment and, and make it as secure as possible. So they want to invest in those technologies. Um, and, and Investing in those technologies just increases the amount of storage and 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 management software that that you need. So we had had some customers asking us for for this type of solution. So we thought it'd be a viable vertical market for us to build a business around, which uh, which uh, Sandrin and myself and and others are are an integral part of. So the challenge for us is how can we how can we help our customers uh, affordably retain their video content for the length of their retention period? Uh, so whether that be 30 days um, or whether that be two years or five years in, in some cases, that, that's what we're out here to do is, is help them cost effectively manage that, that storage so they can then go out and reinvest in, in new technology. Um, so meeting that challenge, what do customers look for in a solution um, that, that helps meet that challenge of, of a growing video environment? Um, obviously one being scalability, having the ability to add more cameras or turn up the, the resolution or frame rate of those cameras at a, at a moment's notice and having the back end, um, both network infrastructure as well as storage to do that. 
Um, so adding, adding, being able to add storage or add capacity um, at the drop of a hat is, is critical in this environment. And having it be very user friendly, um, not a lot of hoops to jump jump through to get that video back or search the video that you're looking for for investigative purposes. Um, and it obviously has to be affordable. If if all of the boxes are checked and and it's not an affordable solution, uh, a lot of the times customers or, or end users aren't going to move forward with that type of that type of solution. So. The, the challenge is out there in, in, in terms of having a large environment um, and needing to retain that video and then meeting those challenges in a, in a unique way um, with, with a scalable, user-friendly and affordable solution. I think Spectra hits, hits those, those check boxes. And uh, from a technology standpoint, I'll, I'll show you how in a little bit. But I wanted to go through kind of what we're seeing in the market first. Um, and how we're addressing uh, the, the different market segments with, with our solution as well. So I'm going to talk a little bit about three different ways or workflows to, um, to archive video or to store video in, in the video market. Um, first being uh, direct attached storage or just archiving or saving video on, on your NVR or, or local on your server. Uh, the next being an iSCSI or uh, SAN deployment, uh, moving up in into the the mid range or or enterprise type of uh, type of environment, and then uh, a truly enterprise uh, type of type of storage or or archive is uh, the network attached storage infrastructure. And I'll I'll dive into each one of these the 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 pluses and minuses um, and, and advantages and and disadvantages of of each one of these and, and then talk about um, our solution being network attached storage in a little bit more detail. So um, without further ado, uh, what we've seen in the market uh, a lot and, and what we're trying to educate the, the market on is um, to maybe move away from the direct attached storage. Um, this this model works great in the, in the smaller camera environment. Um, if there's 10 or 10 to 50 ish cameras and the retention time is lower um, and you just have the the ability to store the video on the on the NVR the recording server it's it's great for that solution um, but as you're scaling past the limitations of that recording server or even adding another recording server for for more storage that's when uh, you're 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 kind of limiting yourself in in terms of scalability um, so it's limited to the storage in that box, and it's it, it's really expensive to uh, to add another server or add another NVR uh, for a storage perspective, and then you're limited to um, kind of the redundancy that's built into that system. So it, the the advantages are if the, if you have a if you have an environment where where it might be smaller and you don't need any additional uh, infrastructure, the 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 NVR is perfect because it's it's provided usually by the VMS company. But as you're looking to scale above that, um, there, there are more cost-effective ways to, to do that versus just adding more server technology or, or another NVR to do that. So what, what we're saying here from a workflow perspective is cameras are feeding into the, the NVR and, and you're storing locally, uh, you're, you're storing your video there locally for the retention period. And as you're adding more cameras, um, you need to add more another NVR or another uh, server technology. And then if if you add another pool of cameras uh, somewhere else, maybe in a in a different building or a different location, you're you're just st stacking more more server technology, and that that can get pretty costly from uh, from an acquisition perspective. Um, and we, we talk, I'll talk a little bit about more of a, a cost per gigabyte um, in a little bit, but I've seen cost per gigabyte range into the dollar twenty-five to dollar fifty um, per gigabyte uh, cost range with with this type of of, of workflow. Uh, next, I'll, moving into the kind of storage area network or SAN, uh, using block level storage or iSCSI protocols to store your video. Um, this is moving into the, the mid range or the 
kind of the, the early enterprise type of environment where you're looking at moving video from those NVRs to a, a another tier of storage. Um, so the advantages are you can you can def software define your storage pools within the the, the SAN or the, the storage area network, which makes it easy to write video to that specific pool. So if if you have an NVR in a certain building, you can write that NVR to a certain pool of storage. Um, where the limitations are, um, it, this, the, there's a, a little bit of limitations in this in the scalability. Um, it's improved from the direct attached or the the NVR storage, uh, but there is some some scalability limitations there, uh, limited to each one that's that's um, in in the system or uh, logical unit number. Um, so each one of those LUNs has to be managed in in a separate uh, in a separate way. So as you scale the environment, it could end up being dozens or hundreds of LUNs in 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 management, and that becomes uh, pretty costly to to scale. Um, so what that looks like from a, another workflow perspective is. Here's your your pool of cameras writing to your NVR, your your typical uh, typical workflow that we talked about before. But as as that fills up, and you want to take advantage of of, of a more cost effective tier, um, going to uh, another uh, another tier is being a SAN and having it limited to those uh, those LUNs is a pretty prohibitive um, as you're starting to scale into larger environments. And each uh, one thing that I didn't mention in this case is each NVR has to manage its own pool of storage. So if you have uh, different NVRs scattered throughout um, your environment, um, which which we see a lot, uh, and customers needing four, five, six, ten, fifteen NVRs to manage the bandwidth of the cameras, um, you'll have to have that storage pool uh, in a SAN environment connected to that that NVR um, so it's it's pretty limited into the in the scalability that way because in, in a lot of cases one of one of the, those environments might be pretty small and then one of them one of the environments might be pretty large uh, across the the different NVRs that you're using so a little bit limited in, in terms of scalability scalability that way um, so, so next is a little bit about the network attached workflow. So, that, this is a, a true enterprise um, architecture or way to look at um, archiving and, and retaining video in a, in a centralized repository. So, it, it provides that that true combination of scalability, usability, and, and affordability that, that I mentioned previously. And I'll, I'll, I'll go into why a little bit uh, more. So it's a great solution for even even the, the 50 to uh, uh, thousands of camera range. Um, what, what we like to say is if you're utilizing storage on, on the, the, the NVRs or the server technology, keep that storage at, at what's, what's in the box, maybe 12, 15 terabytes, and then for the rest of your retention period, archive everything off to a more cost-effective tier. Because uh, we've seen customers need two years of, of retention, and they're they're not going to be able to do that on on a server technology. So the advantages of a NAS, um, it, true scalability. Um, our our solutions, and I'll go into more more details as well. But our solutions scale from small 2U units, uh, 48 terabytes, all the way up to a, a full rack, um, 7.1 petabytes, with multiple protection levels built in, uh, the ease of use of, of setting up a system and, and defining storage pools um, without capacity limitations um, like the SAN uh, or iSCSI solutions have is, is really easy to, to set up and start, start writing video or start uh, retaining video. And then it's truly, truly affordable. Um, costs as low as uh, seven and a half cents a gig. So like I mentioned previously, um, those those dollar per gigabyte um, ranges or dollar fifty per gigabyte ranges in the in the fan and the uh, direct attached storage model uh, 
is, is costly, uh, 10 plus times more costly to scale the system uh, versus, versus our NAS. So what does that look like from a, from a workflow perspective? Um, similar start, we like to have um, the, the NVR uh, and, and the onboard storage of that server NVR uh, take advantage of, of that environment. So maybe keep a, a, a copy or keep a, a few days of, of live video on, on that server. And then as, as that ages off, um, take advantage of um, a, a centralized repository, uh, a tier two of cost-effective storage for, for you to push video to to live out the rest of the retention period. Uh, because in a lot of cases, uh, you know an incident that, that happened uh, pretty quickly and you can go back and look on, on the server layer and, and pull all of that off and, and save it somewhere for investigative purposes. So, but you're in, in a lot of cases, you're required uh, via company policy or legislation to keep the video for a longer period of time. So why keep that on a more, a more costly solution when you can push it down to an archive tier and, um, and, and take advantage of economies of scale. And as you add um, cameras or uh, an NVR to your environment, we can be that true centralized repository and scale uh, with, with your environment as well by, by adding capacity. So it, it, it truly is that, that scalable, cost-effective, reliable solution uh, for, for archive of, of video. So uh, I'll talk about what, what the product or what the solution is, uh, talk a, a little bit about the features and, and benefits of it, and then I'll go into the uh, who we're partnered with and, and certified with from a video management perspective, and then I'll, I'll toss it over to our solutions engineer, Ryan Shapiro, who's going to walk you through the the, the front-end GUI and, and really show you how, how easy it is to, to set up the system. So, as I mentioned, uh, our, our Verde solution is, is our, our specific purpose-built uh, video storage solution that's affordable as low as 7.5 cents a gig, simple to set up, and, and, and Ryan will show you how. Very scalable, flexible, and, and reliable system for, for all environments, for starting out smaller environments that are looking to grow, uh, small environments that are, that are slowly growing, or those true large enterprise type of environments. So as I mentioned uh, before, scalable from uh, 48 terabytes all the way up to 7, 7 and 7.1 petabytes. So if if I, I haven't seen a, an environment that big, so luckily we'll, we'll scale as, as large as you want. Um, both SIFs and NFS uh, compatible. Um, and then we, can, we have the ability to mix, mix and match drives. So we have different drive technologies based on different, uh, different customers' workflows. If you need more of a, a performing drive, um, we have enterprise SaaS drives that we, uh, that we utilize, or if you need more of a, an, a, an affordable archive drive, we, we have those available as well. And that's, that's ten, tending to uh, what we lead with in, in this market as well. Um, so like I mentioned, the, the mix and match drives, it's a huge advantage for customers. Um, we, we have a lot of, of users of our archive drives. They're eight terabyte, SATA, um, SMR drives, it's a, it's a newer technology, but the, the way that they perform and the, the way that they like to perform and perform best is in a long sequential write, which is perfect for video content. So we, we purpose built the Verde with our archive drives for this market uh, because there's not a lot of, like in the IT market, there might be a lot more random access, random reads, random writes, random deletes. Um, and that's where our, our enterprise drive fits perfectly. So if, if there's a video environment where they're taking advantage of, of that type of workflow, that's where we recommend the, the enterprise drives. But in a lot of cases, for, from an archive or, or storage perspective in the video market, they're just writing video content, and then at day 31 or whenever their retention period ends, they're deleting it. So it's that long sequential write, maybe going in and, and looking at some video, but, but never really randomly 
writing, reading, deleting in, in that case. So those archive drives are a are, are great, uh, great uh, technology for that. So each chassis, we can have multiple chassis and we can mix and match drives within those chassis. Um, so the archive drive chassis is, is capable of uh, up to 768 terabytes per chassis, which is extremely dense. Um, we can get in 8 rack U, we can get a petabyte worth of, worth of storage. So in a lot of cases, I didn't, I didn't really mention this, but in a lot of cases in the video environment, there's not, there's not a lot of room for, for gear whether it be in a, in a closet or in, in a rack in the IT room. Um, so we can tr truly be that, uh, that scale um, and that density uh, of a solution to help take advantage of, of um, not much space um, in, in some video environment. Um, so some other things that, that we provide, um, we really tout this, this solution as as just a NAS target. We might see some of our competition come in at that higher cost that I mentioned before, um, but they have a, a ton of features that, that aren't necessarily built for the video environment. So we keep these our solutions pretty basic to make them uh, affordable for, for and purpose built for for this environment, but we we do have a few um, a few added features that that customers have asked us for. One being uh, or or multiple kind of two of the big ones being replication, so we can uh, replicate copies of a video to different um, physical sites, and that that works really well when when customers want to back up. Uh, a copy of of their video for for any reason, and then lastly, another one is uh, we have the ability to do a, a tape out or a, a DR copy to cloud or um, our, our digital tape solutions. So, like Sandrin mentioned in in the first piece, we're a, a manufacturer of archive storage solutions. So one of one of our our product lines is is digital tape libraries and that allows customers to get even more cost effective and, and scalable in their tier of, of storage. So if we have customers that, that have large, really large environments that are in the in the petabyte range or they have really long retention periods, that's when tape might be might be a viable option uh, and a more cost effective option for them to archive their video. And I'll talk a, a little bit about what that workflow looks like. Um, just in terms of scalability, um, we have just some, some numbers here. Uh, we can get flexible in between these certain configurations, but starting out in a, in a 2U um, with 96 terabytes raw, provided some list pricing here just to get some, uh, some, some numbers crunching in your head. Um, pretty affordable type, type solutions here. And then as you scale up into a, a 200 terabyte system, and then uh, into the petabyte system, like I like I mentioned previously, it it, it truly starts to get um, very dense, very quickly um, as you scale for uh, a pretty reasonable cost. So here's uh, a little bit more about that that long term archive. Uh, so what what it takes advantage of kind of what I've talked about before being that centralized repository or centralized archive for all of your video or all of your NVRs. And then if you want to take advantage of true economies of scale, we have the ability to, to push video via our Black Pearl, um, which becomes, you can kind of see that line via short term and long term. Um, it moves it from our Verde NAS solution, which is a file-based system, to uh, our Black Pearl, which is an object storage system. So think of uh, a private cloud within your environment that, that you own, yet we have an, uh, the ability to, to send a copy out to uh, the, a large cloud provider, whether it be Amazon, Microsoft, Google, uh, all, all of those. Um, and then we also have the ability to, to, to put a copy to our, our, our tape solutions as well. So uh, very unique requirements for, for that type of uh, deep archive or long-term storage. 
probably about 95 uh, percent or more of the the opportunities that that I'm working with uh, partners and customers on are is that Verde NAS archive um, and it, it's been a, a great performing box for us and we've had a lot of success with the the various partners that that we work with um, and here's here's just a, a small list of them um, it's part of my job to go understand what uh, what customers are using from a video management perspective and then kind of be that trusted advisor to then uh, build a relationship with that VMS system um, get it certified within our lab and and their lab to to make sure that it's it works as, as an archive to make sure our verde is is a solid uh, storage solution for these types of systems so we have all the industry leaders up there whether it be a milestone a vigilon genetech um, uh, ONSSI, Exact Vision, and then we have some some smaller niche players, whether it be Video Insight in the education space or Safety Vision in the the mobile space. Um, we do a lot with with them as well. So um, the, I'm, there's plenty more that are that is in, in our test queue right now, and we're running uh, we're running testing on. But I'm sure there's going to be plenty more in the future that that I run into. But we we have a great uh, technical team that that loves to do uh, testing with with different video packages. So um, it, that that testing works works around the clock, and it's it's pretty easy to to get in that test queue, um, get the solution tested, certified within within a few weeks. So uh, um, that's just another added benefit of of working with Spectra. So that's that's the end of uh, of my portion, um, the the technology portion. So I'm going to turn things over here to Ryan Shapiro. Um, we're going to make him the presenter, so he can dive into our 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 Verde GUI here and and show you the the ins and outs of how to set up the system and and what the interface looks like. So feel free feel free, Ryan, take it away. All right, thank you for that introduction, Ryan. Um, now, uh, I just want to make sure that you guys can all see my screen. Do you, do you see a Spectre logo and N-Tier Verde in a web browser? Yes. Right now? Yep. Okay, thank you, guys. All right, so this is when you go to the management port IP address of your uh, Spectre Verde system, you're going to be welcome to this screen. Simply enter your credentials and you can log in and you're welcomed with this dashboard. Um, I'll just let you guys know for now that I am running this this system that we're looking at is uh, running on a simulator. Um, I also have an actual system that's based in Boulder that we'll take a look at later for some actual file transfers. Um, but for now um, we're going to use the simulated system to kind of set up a Verde as if it were from scratch, just racked and we're just going to configure it. So um, this is the this the welcome page that that you will go to when you first log in. Um, it gives a good overview of you know the the hardware um, pools if we had it set up, volumes, um, network, and other other performance information as well. Um, as you could see here, there's some green check marks. There's a yellow exclamation point, um, and if there was anything very wrong with the system you'd see a red X somewhere so we keep it really simple um, front and center if there's an issue going on with the system you're gonna know about it right when you log in so um, for setting the system up the first thing we have to do is uh, set up the network so um, you can this is gonna be a pretty recurring theme but from this menu we can double click on the headers and that'll take us to the the proper menus but we can also go to this configuration drop down um, and go to network it will take us to the same place um, as you can see this management port um, this is the IP address for this actual um, system um, because it's a simulator we've actually spoofed this um, as, as you can see they don't match but in in a usual Verde with the usual Verde system, these two would match. Um, you'd navigate to this IP address to get to this management interface. Um, so this leaves us with the data port. 
and this is for all your file transfers. Um, we need to set up the IP on here. So as you could see, there's a, there's a couple different options here. Um, if you had a network card installed with 10 gig support, we can, we can support that. Um, there's also options for even 40 gig if, if that was needed. But for now, we're going to use data one. It's a one gig connection. And I'm going to set the IP address to um, just any value really here for the, the simulator purposes. But here we go, set our IP address, hit save. And now we're, we're all set up um, for data access. But now we need to configure up our drives. Um, so as you could see, we're back at the dashboard. Um, there's this pools header and I can click there and it would take me to a menu where I can carve up the drives as I would like. Um, but I can also go configuration, storage, and pools. Um, so here, here we're welcome to the pool screen and this is also a recurring theme of the Verde system. You have these action drop downs so you, th these are pretty much where you go to do anything in the Verde system. So action drop down, um, and we're going to create a new pool. Um, I'll name it test pool. And you set a high watermark so that when you reach this amount of storage capacity filled, um, you'll be notified and, and made aware that you should think about um, expanding your storage if needed. Um, so. Here we have 35 four terabyte raw drives in, installed in this system. Um, I'm just going to pick out 32 of them for this pool. Um, and the reason I do that is so we can, we have more um, array sizes to play with. So um, here we have 32 drives. You select your protection level. We can do none, mirrored, single, double, or even triple parity. Um, for this instance, I'm going to select triple parity, and you can see as I change um, the different parity levels, um, the actual available storage and overhead um, changes dynamically. So you can get a good idea of how much capacity and overhead um, are, are being taken up just from parity. So let's go with single par or double parity here. And that will allow us to um, test a couple different array sizes. As you can see, there's this slider bar that goes from capacity to performance. So if we want more performance out of this system, um, we can set this up so that there's more arrays. In, in this case, with 32 drives, eight arrays of four drives is the best performance you would get. But of course, the overhead for capacity is pretty high, all the way at 50%. So um, as you could see, it, the, they change as I change this slider as well. Um, but for this instance, we'll just go with capacity, and I'm going to create it. Give it a couple seconds, and there we go. Now we have a pool created, a collection of drives in a, in a rate set. Next, we have to create a volume. So we can get to that from the dashboard screen, but we can also go to the drop down, as I've said. Um, configuration, storage, volumes. Here's that nice action drop down button I was talking about. Go to action new. And we will name this test volume. And we're going to select our pool. And then here we can, we can choose a minimum and maximum size, but it isn't really necessary. The system is capable of growing and allocating space as needed. Um, but you can also set a minimum size and that would allocate a certain amount of space up front. And then the maximum size would make sure that we don't, it doesn't grow beyond um, a certain spot, a certain amount of storage. Um, also, we can turn on compression if your data is compressible and, and also um, access time indications. So you, you heard um, Ryan and Sandrin talk about uh, getting date, uh, some of this video footage down to tape as well. Um, this DS3 volume policy is where you would set, um, set this up. So we can set it up so that it'll write to a Black Pearl system and subsequently tape or the cloud or, or a long-term archive disk. Um, 
we can copy and keep it here so that your video surveillance package can still read straight from the from uh, from the Verde system. Um, or if you you know you needed to re, um, recover some space on here, you can do a copy and delete policy. But then when you needed to get it back, you would be pulling from the Black Pearl system. So um, aside from that, let's uh, go ahead and create this this volume. Okay. Now we have a volume created. Um, and the next thing we need to do is give users access to this volume by creating a share. Similarly, go to configuration, we'll go to the shares menu, and we're going to create a SIFS share. SIFS, let's go to this action drop down. Uh, we got to give it a second to, there we go, um, to create that volume completely. But now the new button isn't grayed out, so let's go there. Action. Let me navigate away and come back. Okay. Shares, SIFs, new. Okay, there we go. Um, we select our test volume, volume, um, and I'm just going to name it test volume as well, and we'll create. Now, um, all, all you need to do from this point is mount this share as a as a network drive and you're good to go um, so for now I'm going to jump over to this other Verde system that we have in Boulder um, I'll log in here <clears throat> and you can see here this system has been used a lot is in use a lot more there's a uh, performance information on the right side we have a listing of all the different volumes that are here, and we're going to be using my Ryan test volume here. So, um, can you guys see my uh, Windows desktop screen right now? Yes. Okay, great. So I'm going to show you how to connect to a share that I mapped on this desktop. So here's my Ryan test share that I just showed you. I'll click on that. Um, and I'll enter in the password. You can also set this up to um, you can also set this up to work with Active Directory so that um, certain users will just have access to this share. Um, but for now, I'm just using the Verde administrator credentials. So enter in that password, and look, we're connected to the share. I have a couple clips here um, and some images, and it's very simple we can just drag and drop things back and forth. So this, uh, let me delete some of this first. But as you could see, this clip one, I can drag it into the interface just like any other network drive you, you've probably worked with before. And we can also drag things back over to the other, the other way around. And it, it's a very simple drag and drop process. So from, from your perspective, if you're using um, uh, some video surveillance package, you won't really be dealing with this too much, but the uh, VS package will write directly to one of these uh, shares on, on the Verde system. So I, I hope this, this looks pretty simple to you guys. Um, I, I've pretty much gone through everything it takes to configure and set up a Verde. Um, you may have to just point point your uh, particular VS package to the share on Verde, but aside from that, it should be very simple setup. Um, I guess if anyone has any questions, feel free to reach out or, or raise your hand or, or whatever. Um, for now, um, I'm going to pass this back to Ryan and Sandrin. Thanks a lot, uh, Ryan. This was uh, this was great. So um, um, I think we can go back to the presentation, although there isn't uh, any anything really left there. Uh, but uh, for anyone on the um, on the conference, um, I think we should uh, probably open the floor right now for uh, for any questions.
Sounds like they're a pretty easy bunch, Sandrin. <laughs> That's right. Well, I will also be following up with a uh, a copy of the the presentation and both Sandrin, Ryan, and myself, Ryan Moriarty's contact information. So, if something does come up, um, feel free uh, reach out if you if, if you think this might be a good fit for a project or want to see the pricing or just some more uh, in integration um, certification work with uh, with our certification partners or VMS partners then we can uh, then we can tackle those as they come was there a, was there a question or yeah I have a question I just wanted to see what um, where do you guys find your your break even point is when you're going from uh, a NAS local storage to when you're when you guys or sorry not NAS NVR local storage to when you when it's it's financially feasible to to bring in one of your solutions. Yeah, that's a great question. I think it, uh, it in to to be a little bit vague in the answer. Unfortunately, I think it depends on the environment. Um, so. Whether it be a, a break-even dollar amount or, or size or camera amount, um, uh, we've seen uh, probably about the. I'm going to I'm going to give you more of a an environment size, uh, probably about the between 30 and 40 terabytes. So uh, think uh, and 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 it, that might be the the starting point or the break-even point or. It, it, it might be a little bit too soon based on some environments for, for that type of solution. But if, if the environment's growing, uh, if it's st starting out small and, and growing, and maybe they have a projection to add 100 more cameras or a new location or something like that, and the, it'll double their capacity, then in, investing in a, a centralized repository or a NAS solution behind that that NVR technology is is probably the way to go. Um, so I'd, I'd say probably in the 30, 30 to 40, 40 terabyte mark range, um, unless they're looking to to, to scale um, up above that. Um, we can also we can we can take a look at uh, smaller environments too. Uh, so our our solution we can use both four and eight terabyte drives. So I mentioned uh, starting out at, at 48 terabytes. That, those are raw capacities, by the way. So uh, the usable will, will be down in the in the 20 terabyte range. So we can we can we can start start pretty low, um, and it, it just kind of from a case by case basis, we can kind of take a look at okay, what's how much. Uh, is the NVR? How much onboard storage is is there? How can you? How much can you scale that system? Versus, okay, maybe if we if we keep that NVR thin on on the storage side, maybe 10 terabytes, maybe six terabytes, whatever the minimum configuration there is, and then push the video to 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 the NAS to to be the archive to let it live out the rest of its life or retention period on there. Um, that tends to uh, be a little bit more uh, more cost effective as well. So it's just a, a, a different way to look at it. But I'd say probably in the in the 30 terabyte range. Right. And just to just to add to that, um, uh, we just to give you a couple of examples um, of of customers without without uh, actually mentioning the name. So we have uh, we have some customers in the uh, medical marijuana uh, license producer space that are using this um, and they they love it just because it scales easy um, it's extremely good it has a very attractive cost point um, but it's also easy to deploy so we have a customer who's actually using it at the farm uh, where they have in the hundreds of cameras but they also have a retail office where they only have uh, something like uh, 10 cameras um, so that's one use case. We also have another example would be one of the cities that we work with where they have the uh, city surveillance um, on this and because it's a, it's very easy to carve out volumes and, and have different use cases in the same box, the same city is using the same box both for surveillance as well as corporate IT backup. Keep in mind that this is a nice box so it's 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 very easy to carve up volumes for for different uh, workflows, right? 
Um, so keep that in mind too. It, keep in mind that you might have a customer that have that has multiple use cases for that, or could have multiple use cases for this box. And just by consolidating these use cases, you can get to a very attractive price point and um, uh, and get the full use of the box. Does that answer your question? Yeah, that's good. Perfect. Any any other questions? Well, again, um, as as Ryan mentioned, we will send an email follow up um, following up um, after this presentation with uh, with the actual presentation and our contact info. We are a call away from you or an email, um, whatever it's easier. Feel free to reach out. We would obviously love to hear more and learn more about your use case and how we can uh, we can partner with you. We uh, here at Spectra, we really look at every single relationship as a true partnership. So we uh, we're very excited with the opportunity to always help customers or or partners for that matter. Uh, but that being said, I would like to first of all uh, thank everyone uh, who presented today. You guys did a fantastic job. Um, and uh, thank you, um, uh, the audience, for, for making the time. Um, and we look forward to, uh, to hearing back from you. Thank you, everyone.